Hi, this is George Loker, and today we're going to start your autobiography assignment. You will find the basic instructions to get started on your focus. You may either find the full details here at the link, Autobiography Assignment, which will open up the tab that will take you to the instructions. The same as if you click on your classroom, go to Classwork, go to Autobiography, and click the link. When you're ready to begin the assignment, have your rough draft to the side of your monitor or on top of your keyboard, whatever is most convenient for you. You're going to be typing into a Google Docs document. Click on View Assignment. Click on Add or Create in the upper right-hand corner. Now, last time we used Google Drive because the document was already existing. This time we're going to click on the word Docs and we're going to create a new document. Once the document is created, we're going to have a blank document or word processing document to begin typing on. So we're going to go ahead and open up the document. And here we have our blank screen. The first thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and title your work. Now we will add a header in just a little bit, but for right now, go ahead and title your story. You can come back and change it later, but you can just call it uh, My Story, or you can call it um, All About Me is one of the titles that I use, or The Strange Life of a Teacher, or I'm just kind of coming up with some stuff off the top of my head, but you come up with a creative title. Think about any book you've ever read, that the title and how important it is so that it gets somebody's attention. For right now, I'm going to start out with All About Me. That's my title. I'm going to hit the Enter key or the Return key. I may talk about in class that on a Mac, the Enter is sometimes called a Return key on a Macintosh or Apple computer. And uh, most keyboards today just says the inner key, but coming from the typing industry, the inner key and the return key are one and the same. And I actually have a slide that's dedicated to talking about this, the return versus the inner. Now, old school Macintosh Apple computers had the return key, but it comes from the industry of carriage return from an old typewriter that you actually manually had to, well, initially you had to actually push the carriage up here at the top you had to push it back and get it back into the home position and then uh, obviously as typewriters became automated the carriage returned automatically returned back to the default home position but uh, anyway that's where the uh, the two terms come from and sometimes i will um, use the uh, term return and enter interchangeably so here we are let's go back to our uh, brand new assignment and we've gone down two returns or two enters. So we're going to have an extra line between our title and our first paragraph. So what you will begin now is typing in your autobiography. If you did not do your homework and you do not have your answers for the nine or, nine or ten questions and you did not convert that to paragraph form on the second night of homework, at this point now you're going to go ahead and just start type in your autobiography. Now, it's much easier to brainstorm the questions, which is why that was 10 points of the assignment. So, so at this point, you're going to go ahead and type in your autobiography from the handwritten rough draft that you prepared. You may start with either a traditional introduction with my name is George Loker. Of course, you use your name. Or you could maybe start with the story first. Now, one of the things that we're also going to learn are some keyboard shortcuts on how to delete text rapidly. I'll try to go over that in just a minute on what I just did. You might have noticed I deleted the text very quickly. So we might start with a resident of South East, uh, Southeast Texas for 40 years. I graduated from I'm actually typing on a pretty small keyboard right here, so I'm making a lot of mistakes. I normally type pretty good. All right, so let's go over a couple things that I've just done very quickly. As you type out your autobiography, and as you're learning to start typing, 
there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that we want to learn. And uh, at this point, you will go ahead and continue typing in your autobiography. If you didn't do your homework, you're going to need to brainstorm from uh, off the top of your head and just basically write a story. Uh, during class, I talked about how this is the first of you telling the story. What is your story right now? And the 10 questions were designed to help brainstorm different ideas for your story. But at this point, I want you to write at least a minimum of a five-page introduction. One paragraph, I'm sorry, five paragraph minimum of five paragraphs. The first paragraph would be an introduction, answering questions one, uh, two, and three, possibly. And uh, the body of your autobiography would answer questions uh, four, five, six, and seven. And that would be paragraphs two, three, four, two or three, four, maybe, maybe five. Uh, you don't want to have too much information in a paragraph, but... Um, you know, you decide how much goes in the middle. And then your last paragraph is a conclusion, and you can talk about uh, your goals and just summarize your introduction and your story. So um, at this point, I'm going to pause the video right after I show just a couple of quick tips on uh, how to delete text when you make a mistake. So while at Lamar, I served as the photo editor for the university. All right, so see, I made a double typo right there, or double capital, and so there's two ways to fix that. What I don't want you to do is delete back to that N. Now, you can do a couple things. You can hold down the control key with your left hand and use your right hand and arrow key back, and notice that the cursor just jumped back one whole word, and then I can go back another whole word, and then I can arrow key into position and then hit the forward delete. So on your keyboard, there are two uh, keys that will delete characters. There's the backspace key and the forward delete key, which is called the delete key. So if I'm between two characters right there, between the U and the N, and I hit the backspace key, the cursor is going to go backwards, deleting the U. I'll do a Control Z to undo. That's the same as reaching my mouse up here and clicking that uh, back arrow. You can see the keyboard shortcut that I've been trying to get you to learn already. It's the Control Z. And then we can also do the forward delete key or just simply the delete key. And when I do that, the cursor pulls the character position from the right and deletes it. Now, there's one more keyboard shortcut that I'm going to teach you, and that is the control backspace and the control delete. So we're going to put it right in between the University Press, which is the Lamar University newspaper, and we're going to hit control backspace. And you'll notice it got rid of the word university. I just did an undo. Or we can hold control delete and it gets rid of the word to the right. So I'm going to undo that right there. So a couple things I want you to learn about navigating on the keyboard. You don't want to pick your hand up and grab that mouse just to move over just a little tiny bit. So control air key to the left, control air key to the right moves you a whole word. Air, uh, and then control backspace and control de delete deletes words in their entirety. So at this point, I'm going to pause and go ahead and let you type in your autobiography, and then you'll resume once you've got your autobiography typed in. Don't forget to hit some extra returns. And what that means is I'm going to blah, blah, blah right there for just a second. I'm going to hit an extra enter key. I want one extra return between your paragraphs. So at this point, you're still typing in your autobiography. You can make my window small and uh, go ahead and continue typing. So that's a new paragraph, and there's actually going to be more on this paragraph, but I'm going to put this on pause for a second. So I finished typing in the autobiography from my rough draft, and you can see I've got a number of paragraphs. Some are short, some are longer. Um, some of it is actually for me to demonstrate... And there's that uh, word again, return key versus enter, a soft return or enter versus a hard return. So when you get to the end of the line, the computer automatically wraps to the beginning of uh, the next line. So you don't want to hit return every time you hit the, the enter key. And if you did that, you want to go back in and delete those extra returns. So we want the computer to be able to wrap. And there's another concept I want to teach you right here um, about moving text. So this paragraph actually didn't belong there, and I'm going to double, I'm going to triple click it so it selects. Now I've already taught this in class that if you double click on a word, the word selects. If you triple click a word, the entire paragraph is selected. So I'm actually going to move this paragraph down. I've decided to put my introductory paragraph 
to start with my name is George Loker and then I've got to put my extra hard return back in there so that I now have two enters or two returns between those two paragraphs right there. Now I want to demonstrate this idea of soft returns versus a hard return. All right, the hard return is when you actually press the enter key and force the computer to wrap to the next sentence. So I want to demonstrate why you want to do one versus the other. All right, so we're going to do a control A to select all of our text. And you'll notice that all the text is now selected. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to change my page setup. Now your page setup may not need to be changed, but I do want you to learn how to do this. And it depends on how much text you have. So if I go over here to the 100% indicator, which is how much you see on your page, and I shrink this down, we see that we have less than a full page. So um, when I say that I have less than one page, we have very narrow margins, and the page ends about two-thirds of the way down. So we're going to go back to fit, which means it goes as wide as possible for my screen. And that allows you to see your text a little bit better, so you can see typos and double capitals that may be made or maybe put too many spaces between words. So you do want to look for typos at this point. Underlined words are misspelled. And uh, you can just ignore all if uh, it's correct. A blue line means that there's a grammar error, and a red line means that something is misspelled potentially. So you do want to resolve those. Make sure all your I's are capitalized. And make sure you only have one space between uh, a character. So one of the things I notice a lot of people do is that they will hit two spaces. That's a very old rule. Uh, there is only a period and the uh, next uh, sentence. So um, if you happen to be in a habit of putting two spaces, make sure you delete that extra space. There'll only be one. And then another common mistake uh, for new users on the computer is that they put the space after the letter and the period's just completely in the wrong place. So make sure that the period is immediately uh, after the letter of the previous sentence and put the space before the next character in the next sentence. All right. So... Um, this is pretty much all I want to show in this particular video. We'll do a second video for the placement of your pictures after you've done this portion. Uh, work with your text. Rearrange your paragraphs and sentences if you want to. You can triple click an entire paragraph and decide it fits somewhere else. Uh, you can also decide to delete an entire group of text. So that last thing I wanted to show you was the page setup, and then we'll also see if we have time to show you the view header and footer. So we're going to go to File, Page Setup, and you'll see that mine has defaulted to 0.25. Yours should be by default to 1. And the reason for showing you this is that sometimes you can manipulate the margins to get a little bit extra text onto one page. And now see, when I went to the one inch margins, now my uh, document without even any pictures is going to two pages. And I'm gonna try to have you set yours to only one page. And we'll play around with the page setup after we get our pictures in. But I just wanted to show you, most of y'all probably see this and I didn't want y'all to see something completely different. And that's okay to have it either way. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our view header and footer. And you can actually just double click. We're gonna go view, print layout should be on. This is what it looks like without the view print layout. I really can't tell the difference at first. But we're going to go and turn on the print layout, and then we're going to double click at the very top of the page, and this goes to our header. And so what I want you to do is uh, put your computer letter. I'm just going to put A for computer A. And then I'm going to tab over. That's in the upper left-hand side of your keyboard. And I'm going to write autobiography. That's the name of the assignment. And then I'm going to tab a couple more times, and then I want you to put your name. Now, if it starts to wrap down to the next line, then I want you, so if all of a sudden it goes like that, then you're going to need to backspace a little bit and take out one of those tabs. Maybe put too many in there. Okay, so um, let me show that on a little bit larger view. And we're just about out of time on this recording. So um, you can take out tabs by clicking in front of the word autobiography and tab it over. So just space it so that it looks about right up there at the top. And that is your header to go back into the body of your autobiography. Double click and now you're in the autobiography. We're also going to center this with a control shift E. 
and that'll be the last thing we're going to do on this video.